Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk of course about the Fire Cuda Gaming Dock. Today we're going to do a brief software overview of the Seagate Toolkit as well as play with some of those LEDs. Now for you gamers out there I know LEDs seem to be a big big thing. You pay a little bit of a premium on these things but ultimately you get them so that you've got some pretty snazzy kit. Right now I'm connected via a Thunderbolt connection to the Fire Cuda Dock with a 4TB drive inside as well as an NVMe drive installed in as well. I do have another video coming soon where I'm going to be speed testing the individual drives but just remember that the 4TB model utilizes um, a 4TB IronWolf hard drive whereas if you want to install an SSD you will have to purchase that separately. In the background here I hope you can see the video. I've darkened the office that I work in as much as I can to show off the LEDs as much as possible while this device is in operation and I'm using the screen recording software OBS and hopefully there won't be too many glitches along the way as Thunderbolt and my GPU get hammered quite constantly. So the Seagate Toolkit is a completely free tool that you get from Seagate that you don't have to use just with the Firecuda dock. It's got a bunch of other features and functions that are utilizable by pretty much any Seagate external drive. You've got the option to create a backup of your localized system. So it will back up individual files and folders on your PC or Mac system to the Firecuda dock. But do bear in mind that Mac compatibility on this drive at the moment is not full. Um, on top of that, you can restore copies of files from the external drive using their software and again this is available for both um, any Seagate external drive as well as of course the Firecuda Gaming Dock and finally at the bottom you can mirror and this allows you to create a myriad areas of, uh, of folders on your localized system that will be in constant synchronization with the docking station. I recommend for you gamers to make sure that you synchronize your Steam library if you choose, or just make sure that your Steam library lives on this external drive completely. Now, let's face it, you're watching this video because you want to see the Firecuda Gaming Dock options. And probably most of all for a lot of you have come to this video to see what exactly you can do with this LED light. Occasionally, periodically, I am going to check that OBS is still functioning there in the background. So I do apologize if you keep seeing that pop up of OBS throughout the video. But what we do is we click on the Firecuda dock and as you can see, all of the storage is currently available. And we've got a few options straight away. We can lower the LED lights if we want, make them nice and high, nice and low. If we want, lower the, brighten, the, the brightness of the LED. And hopefully that is being captured there on the screen recording uh, as well as on the camera that's been mounted to point at this. We can also turn off the status LEDs if we want in the background that denote when the system's being accessed. And apart from that, we can find out more storage information about the drive in our Firecuda dock. But without further ado, let's make our way to the cool stuff. Now, as you can see, we've got orange as a default color here and it's static. But we can also do a mode called blink, which is when the light is going to blink there in the background as we flick through these options. It's just going to blink and it blinks with the read write operations as well. So as the drive is being accessed, that drive will flick uh, uh, the LED flickering, which I do not recommend, particularly for those that suffer epilepsy. On top of that, you've got breathe, one that I found quite pleasing. And as you would expect, the LED breathes there in the background, heightening, going up and down as the system, um, the LEDs react. One minute, let's go back into there. I'm just double checking OBS there in the background. Uh, on top of that, we can make our way to Spectrum. And Spectrum is when obviously the system is now going to flick between each of the individual LED colors on offer to us. And I'm sure on the screen there, things are probably blurring ever so slightly while it deals with the white balance and the color changing. Now, again, you can speed up the LED changing if you want to be a great deal quicker, or you can slow it down and make sure the changes happen gradually over time. You can refresh those changes or just set them back to the default if you choose. And of course, you can increase or decrease um, the brightness of those LEDs as the changes take place. And you can see we're moving gradually through them there. Or we can just let it change very quickly. And then, my friends, we are having ourselves a bit of clubbing. There we go. Mad changing drive. And once again, I should probably stick a disclaimer on the top of this video about lights. And then, of course, you can set it up that when the drive isn't being accessed, the lights will sleep 
there in the background. So you can also create customizable patterns of color changing if you choose and flick the colors that you want between them and you can create certain subroutines of those as you go but for now let's stick it back to solid and have a look at some of those color changes so color changes are implemented pretty quick i mean right now let's flick right between them and we can live synchronize them as we do it if we choose for those changes to be immediate and again the colors are you know fairly good color spectrum there going all the way through them and again let's heighten the brightness all the way up to the top to show you some of those leds happening in real time so for now let's stick with that nice color there let's go actually let's go for something that probably looks a little bit easier on the eye uh, particularly if you're going to be looking at this from above uh, let's stick this on a good old-fashioned green shall we let's go there and we're going to click done even better, sorry, now I've had a sudden change of heart. Let's go back to breathe. Definitely a personal favorite of mine. We'll put that on green for breathing. So changing the LED lights is pretty easy on this drive. It's, you know, it, you do have to install a separate companion app to do it. But of course, while you're doing that, as soon as it's done, you can deactivate that and those settings will remain the same. You can minimize it and it'll live in your taskbar or quit and it won't stop you accessing the drive. And it's also worth highlighting that um, one question that was asked of me in the previous video with regard to this drive is, can you connect standard USB 3 to this drive rather than just Thunderbolt? What if you don't have a Thunderbolt laptop, but you do have a USB-C enabled laptop or just a standard USB-A? So at the end of this video, I will be connecting this external drive via a very simple USB-A to USB-C cable, so not Thunderbolt, just to test if this drive actually works without Thunderbolt as its primary means of access. But let's do a very quick speed test. Um, and when I'm doing the speed test here, it's worth highlighting the main reason why the speed test needs to be in a separate video. A lot of that is to do with capture recording software and GPU power. Right now, as you can see, we're still screen recording all the stuff happening with this drive. I've mounted the uh, Fire CUDA gaming dock here, and I've also mounted an NVMe SSD inside the device as well. In the meantime, I'm gonna turn the lights back on, and I'll probably leave that camera on there, but for now, as you can see, the drive is gonna continue doing its gradual glow. I need the lights back on for later on when I do choose to connect this drive via that USB-C to USB-A cable, but I'm just gonna show you why I need to do the uh, performance test in a separate video. First, we're going to test with Black Magic. Now, if we go into the Black Magic um, configuration, we'll select the target drive. There's our gaming dock. We're going to click OK. The reason is that once you use a laptop or any system where the GPU recording is done locally, it will hugely affect performance. When I perform the speed test in the next video, I will be re using an external capturing device. Because for now, if we try to do a speed test on this drive, whilst it's connected to Thunderbolt, the screen recording software is not going to do this drive justice. And although we are using a standard SATA internal drive, the results you're going to see are going to be rather spotty, as you can see on screen there. We are accessing a hard drive over Thunderbolt, and you might be thinking, wait, Thunderbolt's 40 gigabits per second. Slow down, Tex. The reason is... That although you've got 40 gigabits per second on Thunderbolt, a hard drive still will max out at around 200 megabytes if it's you know a NAS based drive like this. So do bear that in mind. Let's double check, we're still recording, lovely stuff. So, what about if we try the NVMe drive? Let's try that out. So, now we're going to select the NVMe, we'll select the NVMe drive there, and once again, we're going to start. And as mentioned, this is not going to be representative of my final speed test of this device and these drives because the screen recording software as you can see and the thunderbolt connection in conjunction with it are just not going to do the job well enough and they're going to affect the results and undermine what we're doing take it one step further and we can look at the speed testing software aja and once again even if we set these settings to just the default so a 1080p file we'll set it to a, a one gigabyte file We'll make sure that disk caching is not enabled. And again, we will select the dock, the 4TB drive. We're getting 
that 230 odd, but then it keeps dropping because of our screen recording software. So for now, do not count what you're seeing on screen right now as the official read rights from my YouTube channel because it's just not representative of the product as a whole. When the GPU and the CPU are battling the Thunderbolt draw on the processor for these results. But nevertheless, I do want to show them because at least it gives you some idea of how easy it is to access. And as you can see, we are getting reads of well over a thousand megabytes per second and writes of well over 500 on an NVMe drive inside this Firecuda gaming dock. So let's wrap things up here with the final part of my video as described. I'm going to connect this drive to this laptop using standard USB and not Thunderbolt. So first thing I'm going to do is safely disconnect the device. I know I'm going to be dead sensible about it. Let's eject our device. We're going to eject both of them. We're going to eject both the NVMe and the hard drive. As you can see, they're both done safely. They've both been disconnected. And there you go. Now we can disconnect our Thunderbolt cable. Now, as you've probably seen on camera while I did that, when I disconnected that cable, the device powered down. And that's because Thunderbolt external drives will not continue to function without um, a connected Thunderbolt cable. So once again, I have not tried to connect this device with standard USB yet. But given that this device needs to have a USB-C or Thunderbolt connection to operate, we're going to know pretty quickly if this device is going to work. So we're going to connect a USB-A cable, a USB-A end to my laptop, and we're going to connect to the external drive. It's powered up the drive, but is it going to deliver enough power to maintain this device? Let's have a look. Let's see if these external drives, the NVMe and the 4TB, is going to appear on my available list of hard drives over USB rather than Thunderbolt. And if they do arrive, here we go. We've got our Firecuda Gaming Dock Drive. We've got the QNAP software popping up there. It's seen the Firecuda but it hasn't shown us the NVMe yet. But nevertheless, why don't we take this opportunity to do a USB test of that gaming dock on that D drive? So once again, we're gonna go back into Blackmagic. We're gonna select the one gigabyte file. We're going to select the um, Firecuda drive, and we're going to click Start. So again, the screen recording software is going to make things very difficult indeed. But right now, I'm not sure it's going to be sufficient. We're already seeing the read-write of that drive come through nice and neatly. And of course, if you do take advantage of this device using standard USB like this, you can access the drives and media by the looks of things. Fantastic. But it's you almost certainly will not be able to take advantage of the docking station capabilities, such as DisplayPort, such as USB 3.1 Gen 2, and taking advantage of the um, RJ45 LAN port in conjunction with all of those ports simultaneously. But I will say it is good to see that it did see that drive. Perhaps if we go into management, we'll be able to see if the NVMe is even visible. Let's have a look and see if the NVMe drive is presented to us on the list of available drives. Quickly double check and our screen recording software is present, but it would appear the NVMe is just not getting enough oomph to allow the USB connection to access it. However, if you are gonna take advantage of this device utilizing standard USB in the meantime, until you upgrade to a Thunderbolt solution, this sounds like it's going to very much work for you. So I'm gonna wrap things up here on the Firecuda Gaming Dock um, software overview and move over to some speed testing as well as another video where I'm going to be showing a setup using this device live with connected devices maybe even uh, daisy chaining some thunderbolt kit too otherwise i hope you've enjoyed this video click like if you have and click subscribe to learn more and otherwise go to the nas conveyor link in the description to learn even more about nas solutions thunderbolt solutions das solutions and everything data storage and shop from span.com for your next data storage solution 25 years in the beers they know what they're doing but otherwise see you later and i'll see you next time